The membrane attack complex uh, has two major parts to it, and this won't take us nearly as long, I promise you. So the membrane attack complex has what I collectively have called the anchor, and then the drill. Now, the anchor consists of C5 beta all the way through C8. Then the drill, the part that actually drills into it, is just the C9 polymer. And we'll see some pictures that will explain that a little bit further. The other thing that I wanted to mention on the subject of this, though, is that the membrane attack complex is all about C5. Now, unlike C3, C5 doesn't have a thioester bond. But when we have C5, it goes into being exposed to a C5 convertase. It's a convertase, so it does exactly what you're going to think it is. It's going to break down C5 into alpha and beta subunits. C5 beta being the one that's acting as the anchor, it's going to bind to the pathogen. C5 alpha being the one that's going to act as an inflammatory agent and anaphylotoxin. But the one that I really wanted to stress is the structure of C5 convertase, which is formed as a part of the alternative pathway. So we have C5 convertase, and this is how I draw it. It's really stupid. <laughs> like, the, the drawing is stupid, but hopefully it'll, it'll drive home the point that you, you really remember it. So we have, on the surface here, we have beta factor B. Okay, so factor B beta subunit here. And I'm going to give him some eyes. There. And then the two parts of this thing, this convertase here, look like this. Those are teeth because it's an enzyme. Enzymes always are like cutting things, always draw them as something like that. Anyways, the two subunits of this are C3 beta. C3 beta. So in case you can't tell, this is a factor B beta subunit with two C3 betas on either side of it and that's what gives you your C5 convertase. Um, and this is what's going to convert C5 into C5 alpha and C5 beta. C5 beta is going to, if I can draw it here, start the whole process of forming the anchor. And then once we've formed ourselves a nice little anchor, we can form ourselves the C9 polymer drill. So let's look at some pictures. Cleave by attaching to it. And this is the convertase of that. I like my drawing better because it has teeth, but whatever. That's not important. C5 comes in and it will be cleaved into the C5 beta and C5 alpha. Again, this is going to go off and to recruit other uh, neutrophils and macrophages and other inflammatory agents. And C5 beta is going to go and then be exposed to binding by some mechanism that the book didn't tell me. Uh, and then start the formation of that anchor and then we'll start to form the drill. Okay. And this is just showing you, again, what I just said. The C5 convertase, which is a... I'll do, use colors here to... I don't know why I'm in a colorful mood. We have C3 beta on one end, the C5 convertase. On the other end, we have another C3 beta. And then in the middle, we have that factor B beta. I'll use gold for that. That's a prettier color. Factor B beta. That's, that's the C5 convertase. It will bind and cleave C5 to C5 alpha and C5 beta. Cleavage of this initiates the generation of the membrane attack complex because this guy is the anchor for all that. Um, the results of early activation events, uh, generally speaking, uh, binding of large numbers of C3 beta on the surface of the pathogen, and then, again, alpha, look at the A, anaphylotoxin, something that induces anaphylaxis. Okay. So this is a picture kind of showing um, the membrane attack complex, how it works. So all of these things here, so C5 beta is going to, in this is not a, on the pathogen surface, but it's going to bind to all of this. It's going to bind to C6, and then C7 is going to come in. Some notes that we want to make about this. So here, this whole thing here is the anchor. Oh my god, my handwriting is bad. But... Hopefully you can see it. I'm just going to draw a picture of it. There's an anchor. This is the, the landing site for the airstrike. Um, C5 beta binds to C6, which then catalyzes, changes its conformation to bind to C7 and then C8. So some notes that I want to make about the anchor is it's C5 beta 
with c6, which comes to c7, oops, sorry, which comes to c8. So c7, if you, in case you can't tell, this is an integral protein. If you'll think back to what an integral protein is, that is just where it's a protein that has a hydrophilic and then a hydrophobic region, which this picture kind of diagrams that it's dipping into the hydrophobic region, the, the fatty acid tails of the lipid membrane. And then C8 is a completely transmembrane protein, which is important for this formation here. So all of these things combined here, the anchor act to form a C9 polymer. And it's not necessarily like an enzymatic reaction so much as it is that through a long series of conformational changes, C9 binds here and then here and here and here and here and here and here and here, and ultimately they'll end up binding in each other in this nice little circle here, which shows that this is, a, I think, an electron micrograph of these lesions on the membrane. Now, obviously, this works great for uh, pathogens that have a membrane, but if they don't have a membrane, and say they're surrounded by a shield of uh, peptidoglycan, it's going to be less effective. I'll do it in kills by destroying the proton gradient across this membrane. And so obviously if you're killing that, you're uh, destroying any uh, ways that are, in this context, the pathogen would be able to have that proton gradient it needs for undergoing ATP synthesis. But it's, it, you're, you're lysing the cell. You're poking a hole in it. If I were to just walk up and stab you, obviously things would come out of you, things that you need to keep you alive. So I, that's kind of almost diving in a little bit too much detail.